And let's look at building a transaction. And you can see what I just explained in code here. So we're going to get the most recent block hash by querying the chain using an RPC request. And so I'm passing in the connection as a parameter here. But if you look on this page, this is how you set up a new connection to the Solana network. So right here is all you need. In this case, I'm using DevNet and I'm setting these two configs. So the confirmed config for commitment just means I want to get signatures back from transactions when I know that they've been confirmed in a block. And on Solana, that's only like a few hundred milliseconds. So it's pretty fast. So it'll actually, when you run like in a wait, it'll wait to make sure that it's been confirmed before giving you a response. And then I set the timeout to 60 seconds instead of the default for 30 because, you know, sometimes like my Wi-Fi is a little slow or sometimes DevNet is a little slow. So I just set that config as well. Anyway, um, going back to the transaction here, we use the connection to the network to actually query with an RPC request the latest block hash. And then we store it in this field. And you can see that when we create our message, just like we saw in the payload here, we are actually setting the payer of the transaction, the recent block hash, a list of instructions, and then the header is automatically generated. So then you just compile that into a version transaction, which is actually a brand new thing. Um, I wouldn't really worry about how transactions were built previously. I would just focus on this setup here. And then we go ahead and sign it with every one of our signers that are needed. And we return the transaction. So that's what this function is going to do. You're going to see this thing used a few times as we go throughout the script. But let's take a look at some more code here and figure out exactly how we do some of these operations that we just covered, right? So going to accounts, we talked about registering a public key with the blockchain as an address. So that's the act of creating an account. And right here, that's exactly what that looks like, right? So, and by the way, if you guys need this to look any bigger, like if you want me to zoom in, just say it in the chat. But um, anyway, when you go to create an account, the first thing you want to do is check to see how many LAN ports this account needs to be funded with. Because like we talked about with rent, when you create an account, you need to fund it with enough soul or LAN ports to pay rent. And there's actually a function for that. You can use an RPC request and you can get the minimum balance for rent exemption, which kind of ties into one of the questions that popped up in the, in the chat here. Um, this is a function that you can use to get the amount of rent that you need for a particular account size. In this example here, we are allocating a size with no additional space. So it's just gonna have those default fields, no inner data. And so for that reason, I put a zero here. And now this would be enough to fund, but I'm adding an additional 100,000 LAN ports because I wanna later do some transfers, right? But this part right here is not necessary. This is just something I'm doing for example's sake. So then we just go ahead and run this right here. So you can build instructions manually and we'll probably see an example of that later when we do some token stuff, possibly. Actually, no, we'll see an example of that when we do our smart contract. But most of the traditional operations that you're going to need on Solana, there's SDKs to build these instructions for you. So you don't have to worry about all the like different configs. And I did share this code, William. This is in the workshop repo link, which I will share again for you. Maybe we could pin it or something. But um, anyway... So yeah, when you run this create account function, you can see that it's gonna to return to you a transaction instruction. It's one of those many SDK functions that are designed to make that a little easier to build for you. So you pass in which public key is going to pay for the new account, what the new account's address is gonna be. And I'm passing that in as a parameter because you'll see in the bottom, we're gonna actually create a couple accounts. So this is gonna be the new public key that we're gonna register with Solana that amount of LAN ports that we just figured out how much we need. And then finally, the program ID or the owner of this account. In this case, I'm gonna use the same setup as like a traditional wallet on Solana, and I'm gonna make the owner the system program. And then you can see right here, I'm just using my build transaction function, passing in a couple of things to have the key. So we have to also sign it to pay for the transaction, but we also have to add a signature from our new key pair as well. So you need both. And then we pass our instruction 
and you go ahead and use that connection object to send an RPC request with that transaction, and that will actually go ahead and build the transaction and send it to create a new account. So I'm going to run this thing at the end, but I want to kind of like cover some of these code snippets. So that right there is how you create an account. And anything you see on here, guys, that says log, again, this is just like print statements. So you can pretty much ignore all this stuff, but this is going to be the meat and potatoes right here. So creating an account looks good, pretty straightforward. We create an instruction to do so, and then we send it in a transaction with the necessary signers. Pretty straightforward. And that pattern is going to be what you follow to do any Solana operation. So I want to just quickly call out that if you notice, we just created a new account without the use of a smart contract of our own creation. We're using the native system program. So again, I'm circling back to this because you can build full dApps. In fact, many people do and they exist today that don't, you don't have to write your own smart contract. In fact, there's really a smaller number of reasons why you do need to write a smart contract than there is reasons why you don't, which sounds funny, but like, this is what I try to make this point to people because like you can just kind of like rely on your JavaScript skills and your dev experience building JavaScript applications to get into Solana development. And you don't really even have to worry about Rust until you need it. So just keep in mind that like everything you're going to see here is just using native programs and it's all packaged into this SDK. So like you can just use the native programs and the native instructions and run plenty of operations to build D apps. So quickly checking the questions real quick. Um, is there a Python module to interact with Solana? Yes, there is. This is not one created by Solana labs, but there is a Python SDK that has most of this JavaScript SDK code in it. I'm gonna share it in the chat. It's called Solana Pi. Again, not official, but that is gonna be pretty much a mirror of this SDK in Python. So if you're more comfortable with Python, go right ahead and use that. Just be aware that it's not maintained by the same maintainers as Solana Web 3 JS. Anyway, so going back to our examples here, um, let's take a look at some of these other like features in this code here. So we saw creating an account. And now if we want to query an account's data using an RPC request, like we saw with this guy here, right? Just like a get request. And this is what that looks like right here. You can see there's no transaction involved. We're just doing a query, just like we did with, you know, querying how much LAN ports we need, querying what the latest block hash is. These are all RPC requests that are equivalent to get requests. So you don't need a transaction. You can just ask it a query and it'll tell you. So in this case, we're going to query that account that we, well, we're going to query the account we just created, but this is a function that can be reused. So you can see down here, we're creating key pair A, and then we're querying its data. And I'm going to try to run this, but I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason it doesn't work because that's usually how it goes when you're presenting, right? So I'm going to go to client examples. And for any of you guys who have this locally, if you need to know, this is how you would run it. You just do a yarn install from within client examples. Actually, let me just double check how I laid this repo out. Yeah. And then you can do yarn run accounts. And um, this might take a second, so I'll give it a second. But anyway, yeah, like I said, so you can just hit the network with an RPC request for a query, and it'll return to you this account info object. And you can see that it wraps this buffer type. And that's because it's gonna give you back the account info of all the different you know, default fields that we saw in the, in the slide. But the buffer is gonna be the bytes that represent the inner data. And the reason that's defined there in the type is because you can do a parsed account and you can try to like deserialize that all in one step. That's a little bit complex and outside the scope of this particular tutorial, but for the most part, just understand that it's going to give you back that account info with the default fields and your data is going to be in the form of bytes. So um, checking questions again, real quick in create account, which key pair are you referencing? So if you look at create account, I'm passing in a key pair and down here, I'm going to run it and I'm going to use 
that same function to create each of these, right? So start with A, then we query A, then we create B, and then we transfer from A to B. So that's what these, that's what the script is. This is the script right here. And then all those up there are just the functions that it's using. Um, okay, so hopefully that clears that up for you, Jeremy. Any Anything else though, let me know. But yeah, so see if this thing decided to work when I ran it. Okay, now see, I have issues lately sometimes connecting to DevNet. I'll give it one more try. Okay, there you go. So it looks like it might be wanting to work a little bit. So created a new key pair, and you'll see how slow this is. You'll see why I did the timeout the way I did. But all right, so create a new key pair. There's the new accounts public key. And then you can see the transaction was successful, and there's the transaction signature. So quickly, I'm going to show you guys actually what this looks like. Go to explorer.solana.com, which I'll share in the chat as well. This is what's called a blockchain explorer. And this is a really cool tool for looking at the data that you're actually modifying on chain. This is just an entire blockchain querier. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're on the same network that you are going to be working with. Ours is DevNet. And you can see DevNet's a little dicey at the moment, but we're switching over to DevNet. And then let's take a look at the account that we just created, the public key. This might be a little slow because it looks like it's having trouble connecting to DevNet right now, but we'll see if that loads. But either way, you can look up the account by its public key, and you can also look up transaction signatures, which you'll see right here. Yeah, so DevNet, I think, is having a little bit of problems at the moment, which seems to happen whenever I want to conduct a workshop. But regardless, you can look up public keys, like I said, or you can look up transaction signatures, and it'll actually show you these on chain. Um, what I'm going to do real quick, guys, and I don't expect you guys to have this thing set up, but if you download the Solana CLI, like I sent the link for earlier, you can actually run your own local validator node. And for reasons like this, this is really convenient. You can use testnet, yes, um, but I typically will default to the local net instead. The only caveat on local net is any programs that aren't like native programs, you have to import, which you know I'm not going to necessarily have time to do today, but we'll cover that later. Point is, you get all the native programs and a single node validator locally when you run this Solana test validator. So I just did that, and I'm going to actually switch this to local net by doing HTTP. It's going to be localhost 8899. Then I'm also going to just set my configs to local net, as you can see there. So now that this is set up for local net, this should be much faster and it should work. So we'll give that a rip. And then another cool thing about this, yeah, you see how much faster that was? You can actually use the Explorer to look at your local setup too.